Hello and welcome, social media practitioners. This is David with special guests, Vernon E.L. Smith and Kevin Harvell, here to talk about best practices in the post 2.0 web. We are currently live on YouTube, Ustream, YouNow, StreamUp, Periscope, Meerkat, and Rabbit. No joke, we are on seven streaming services all at the same time. Thank you, Periscope people, for the hearts. So first, I want to get some feedback before I introduce our amazing guests. Daryl Pritchard, Senior Service Delivery Manager at Microsoft, has this to say on Twitter. Congrats, David V. Kimball. Your publishing cred just went up. Of course, he's referring to the book that I just launched. So uh, that's exciting news. We have Jez, writer at Windows Central and web developer of ICXM, on Twitter says, David Kimball helped me use Twitter to get into games journalism. He's written a book on the topic. Go buy it now. Thank you for the ringing endorsement, Jez. Really appreciate it. If you look on the IXM.net homepage, you will see an advertisement for my book as well. And the last thing I'd like to get to before we get to the material today is someone named Audrey wrote me and said, Hi, David. You are an excellent speaker, enthusiastic, knowledgeable, good enunciation, evenly spaced tempo, and being who I am and loving you as much as I do, it was fun to see your Kimball mannerisms. This, of course, is my grandmother, Grandma Kimball. Thank you so much for watching. It was definitely a surprise. I was not expecting you to watch. Uh, and if you understood it, I hey, all the more power to you. That's, that's pretty impressive. Today's topic is podcasting. At this moment, I would like to introduce our guests, who I have the privilege to podcast with every single Monday on another show, the MS Mobile Show. The guests are Vernon E.L. Smith and Kevin Harvell. How are each of you doing today? Wonderful. I'm doing fantastic. Today is good. Awesome. How do you guys feel the uh, earlier show went with Ben Rudolph? Uh, great. I think it was uh, it was a great show. It was it was fun. My children did not wake up and pound on my office door, so that was a bonus. Yeah, your ch children weren't involved. But Ben's were involved. We had to go put them down for their nap since he was taking the day off today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was great of him. That uh, it was his day off actually. Uh, he, for the listeners who don't know, Ben Rudolph works at Microsoft, and his day off, he spoke on our Microsoft themed uh, podcast, which is very very. Very nice of him, and it was a great show. So I thought it went really well as well. I felt I felt uh, pretty bad. I did not realize it was his day off. So that, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that either when we were when you were scheduling it. He just said, "Hey, I'm I'm free this day. Let's uh let's get started." So uh, anyway, I thought that was neat. Um, so I'm gonna take a look at these notes here. Um, I have some questions for you guys. I'm gonna start with, uh, Kevin. How did you get started with podcasting? And and tell us a little bit about. Uh, all the podcasts you're part of. All right, so long list. You know, it it all started with STL Tech Talk podcast, which you know, living in St. Louis, obviously, you know, I wanted to do a technology based podcast, and it started off as a general consumer focused podcast, but then we gradually transitioned it to just focusing on St. Louis technology, and me and JJ Hammond launched it back in September 2013, I believe it was. And it just kind of grew from there. And so I've been doing that show. Now I do that solo and I do that live in person with interviews instead of doing the prior hangouts method, which we typically do with all the other shows. And then we launched Tech Informist. We've got a Codecast by STL Tech Talk, which for software developers... It's a it's a great show. Currently looking for steady host because Gus Emery, who unfortunately has only been home in in his house, I think approximately six weeks out of this calendar year. Good he's great. so wow. busy traveling with his other job, so he's just all over the place. So that show is still getting downloads, and it's great information. But you know, if you're again, if you're a software software developer. That's a great show to check out. Well, that's awesome. You have a you have a clear history with podcasting, and in particular with tech. And I personally have gotten a lot of out of your podcast. I listened to a few STL Tech Talk ones recently. Really enjoyed those, and of course, uh, the work you do and the other podcasts. Really great to have you producing our MS Mobile show. Uh, you do a great job, Vernon. 
Now I want to know how you got started and uh, and how and podcasts you've been a part of. Well, first of all, I became a podcaster because I was a fan of a particular thing in general, and there happened to be a podcast about that, and I was the persistently vocal fan of that favorite show of mine. Uh, the show many of you, or some of you may know, um, at least in the Microsoft community, is Glance and Go Radio, which I um, was a fan of. I, I, I participated a, as far as feedback and did a couple blog posts for the site and things like that, and one time I was just asked to be a guest on the show, and for one reason or another, uh, it it turned out well, and I ended up recording uh, at least 50 episodes with that show. That it has not died; it has just uh, slowed down as far as frequency of episodes being uh, published. But that show is still out there. And then, um, as far as and then this MS Mobile show, just the two two podcasts that I've been a part of so far. I've guested on a few different shows and and whatever, but um, I I like being a podcaster because I like podcasts and I believe in um, well, we can talk about more about it later but I just believe in podcasts in general and that's why I like to put effort into this into this medium awesome and you certainly did your share of convincing I was not a podcaster not only did you convince me to become a podcaster and and, and be involved in that but you convinced me to you know, consume content from podcasting as well, and I am in your debt. Podcasting is amazing, and so, and uh, as far as how I got into podcasting, I listened to the Zoo United podcast back in the day, uh, and uh, of course that was focused on Microsoft Zoo when I was really, really into Zoo, and that was fun. And then Glance and Go Radio, the one you mentioned earlier, was really the first podcast I really got into, and the only podcast I should say. Uh, and that was my gateway. From there, I got to meet you, and you, you talked about MS Mobile Show. I got to meet Kevin. So really thanks to you guys that I'm doing this, and I am in your debt. This is really a blast, and uh, I'm excited to see in particular where this show goes as well as MS Mobile Show. So what was the very, very first podcast that you listened to, Kevin, if you can remember? Mine, I would have to say, it was probably Baseball Tonight from ESPN. I was thinking about that whenever you sent over the questions, and I had to really think about it. I mean, there's so many good ones out there, and they cover pretty much any topic you can think of. You can find probably a show that focuses on that, whether it's a favorite TV show, favorite sport, favorite hobby, just anything, and there's probably a podcast available for it. And if not, there's always that opportunity. You can always start your own. That's right. That's the beauty of it. That's awesome. So how, what, like, I guess when would that be, like, what year would that have been that you got into podcasting? Probably only about three years ago. I mean, it, it hasn't really been that long, but I've always been a fan of audiobooks, so I kind of look at podcasting as an extension of of an audiobook. It's just you typically have to wait a week for the next episode, versus an audiobook, you can always get that next chapter you know, pretty much instantaneously. Yeah, exactly right. Good point. Chris S., thank you for watching on You Now, I See You. Uh, Vernon, what was the first podcast you can remember listening to? Well, as far as the first uh, tech podcast, I would easily say it was Windows Central, or at the time, Windows Mobile Experts, and that was something that w was much more frequent at the time, and I was a consistent uh, l listener. That was my first consistent listening uh, you know, show I listened to, but I'd say years before that, I had done, at the time, it was more considered um, you know, internet radio, but it was uh, public radio shows just like uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, like I mentioned before, or perhaps um, i trying to think of the other one necessarily. But it was, um, I didn't even think of it as a podcast at the time. I just thought of it as on demand. And so I don't quite count that. But really, the podcasting did start from that and has, has um, transitioned in and out of that space. And it's, it's interesting how the lines have been kind of blurred between podcasting, internet radio, um, just regular on-demand um, shows. You know, like, for example, um, you know, Twit doesn't necessarily consider themselves the, uh, in a podcast. They call it uh, something else, which I don't recall, actually. Netcasts. Right yes, yeah. there we go. So, kind of answers your question, at least, I would imagine. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, if someone was brand new to the podcasting space, 
what would you recommend for them as far as where to begin? I'll start with you, Vernon, and I'll go on to Kevin. Uh, because I know I was very inter- interested in podcasting, and there isn't a completely clear direction to go necessarily. So what, what tips do you sort of have? Well, first of all, with any anything you want to do, whether it's for truly you know making your first million or it's just something that you you want to whittle wooden ducks or bird calls or like you know whatever something that you want that you're passionate about or expect to become more passionate about, you need to focus on your why. Why do you really want to do this? Why do you want to share what you're passionate about with the rest of the world? If you want to share the trials you go through in life, the bad things in your life, that certainly isn't off limits or anything. You can certainly do that. There are, I'm sure there's podcasts like that. But you want something, that to, if you're going to commit to podcasting, it needs to be something you're going to enjoy. It's going to be something that, that um, you really need to focus on the why, basically. Why are you doing this? Start from that. And then the technical stuff, there's tons of people who can help you with that. There's continuing growing technology, plenty of different ways to do this. I mean, this this show in itself is a perfect example of the opportunities, the ways, the new ways to get your content out there in a in an on-demand or streaming streaming manner. Um, that is that's only going to continue to grow. But it comes back to the, the networking and the sharing, the the evangelism. You need to focus on why you want to do it in the first place. Why you want to do it? I think that's amazing. I think that goes along with what I was saying about uh, last episode about when you when you enter the Twitter space, uh, align whatever you're doing, whether it's podcasting, engaging on social media, align that with your topic, align that with what you're interested in, and that's how you. That's the easiest way, really, to get something successful started. That's a great point, Kevin. What what advice would you have for people that are wanting to get into podcasting? For somebody that is wanting to get into podcasting, I would recommend a couple Facebook groups, and I know I I suggested them and added you to them as well, David. Uh, you know, Podcast Movement, which is a big conference that this is going to be its second year, and it's at the end of July into beginning of August. It's just a couple day thing down in uh, Fort Worth. It's going to be a great great thing that we're really looking forward to but you know get involved with communities and you know that way you know because those people already know you know kind of how to do this and it gives you an opportunity to bounce ideas off them which you know such as what you were doing and the because communities want to help each other succeed and you can listen to other shows to get an idea and so you can find your voice and find your show's format I think those are pretty valuable things. Just for somebody that's wanting to get in, get started, find a few shows that you're interested in, listen to them, and kind of see how they're structured. And not necessarily mim- mimic them 100%, but you know, kind of follow a general format and then tweak it to make it your own. That's very sound advice. You know, I think maybe if people listen to this years down the road, if you were to recommend, oh, use this service, you know, uh, host with this service as the thing you first recommend to people. Well, maybe that service is antiquated now, and that that uh, you know that's useless information. But both of you offered timeless, important uh, pre-podcasting advice. Find what you love, find a community of people that will help you, and that's exactly that's exactly how I started mine. So that those communities, those Facebook communities you sent me to, Kevin, were invaluable. In fact, I had this idea and I was all excited about it. And when I get excited about an idea, I just kind of do it, you know. But he said, "Hey, you know, maybe you should ask these people. I know you have some questions." And that was invaluable. That actually completely changed how I hosted my files based upon what somebody said in that group. And so, and that's shaping how I'm doing it from now on. And I'm very, very excited about it. So, yes, utilize communities because they do want to help you, and uh, and they will invest their time and energy. I, I think the thread that I started has like 30 or so comments on it, and you know, they're like, hey, let me know how it goes. Like, let's see it when it's out there. So that yeah, kind of stuff is valuable. Because, I mean, you were going at it in a completely different way that a lot of people were like, well, I'm not sure if this will work, but I'm interested to see if it does. So, I mean, they were pretty excited to see what you've done with this. And, you know, even myself, I've done, you know, over 200 episodes. And, you know, I'm kind of learning some of the stuff that you're doing with this. It's like, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, some people said seriously, seven streaming services at once, and uh, instead of like that's dumb, I got a lot of that's amazing, that's a cool idea. So it's very ambitious. 
Yeah, it, it is a bit ambitious. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so we talked about sort of how to get started, but um, you need you need good equipment, I think, if you podcast. So uh, I guess to either one of you, I think I'll start with Vernon again. What is some good software and good hardware to use when you podcast? Well, to make it really simple, um, whatever allows you to focus on the content. And by that I mean if you go out there and you say, I'm going to have the best sounding show. My audio is going to be better than anybody's show. Okay. Um, first of all, that's going to cost you a few grand, potentially many grand. Okay. But even if you said, I'm going to spend a thousand bucks on on equipment. Okay. Well, first of all, at what point are you going to make that back that that thousand bucks? I don't mean by truly, you know, profit or revenue or that type of thing, but the investment that you put in your time, your family's time. Think about that. When is that worth it? Okay, so whatever software and hardware works that allows you to focus on the content because the content is what's going to get people coming back to listen to you. You could have the best sounding audio and three people listen. Doesn't really, you're not really sharing your message. But if you have moderate uh, audio and more people listen, well, that's that's what you want to do. You want to get that message out there. And um, of course, if you really have really, 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 really bad audio, you will turn people off. Sure. So let's look at some price ranges then. Let's say you have 50 bucks to spend on getting good audio. Is there something you can recommend or, or anything that comes to mind? Well, something that um, just real easily, I think this was maybe 55 bucks, but this is just a Microsoft um, Life Chat headset which I really don't use for podcasting anymore, but I used it for, for um, boy, a good, almost a year, basically. Um, really not, it's really, really simple, okay? Not too expensive, and of course, it's all in one. Um, right now, I use a, a Blue Yeti microphone, which is um, really just 100 bucks or whatever. It's not much. It's a USB microphone, and it's, you, know, you don't really need anything for headphones. It's pretty cheap. As far as, um, and... I don't know. Kevin could add more to this. He does more of the ad, uh, the editing. That's just my side of it here. I, if I can help it, I stay out of the the editing part of it. Sure, that makes sense. But but again, like this basic stuff. Like some people don't even know that it's a good idea to wear headphones when you podcast because of feedback. Like there's there's certain information that people just don't know. So to know that you can pick up a headset for like fifty bucks, plug it into your PC, start podcasting. That's really good to know for people. Kevin, do you have anything to add to that? Well, there's always the microphone that I used to start with and that was an ATR 2100 from Audio Technica and that typically runs on Amazon anywhere from 50 to 60 dollars you can use it with an XLR cable to you know go directly into a mixer or you know simply plug it via USB directly into your computer and you know it works really really well we've we've used it at at home in situations and actually out in the field with a Zoom H4n audio recorder. And it sounds great for what it is. I mean, for $50, it is a great starting point. Now, I... software-wise, you know, editing, you know, use Audacity. You know, find a, find a good course, spend some time with it. It's available on Mac and PC. And it's a very powerful piece of software. It is. It's what I'm using right now. Now, am I correct in saying all three of us are using Blue Yeti stereo microphones right now? Correct, yes. Correct, awesome. yeah. So if you like how we sound, uh, then certainly pick up a Blue Yeti microphone. Now, another thing to keep in mind is no matter how good of a microphone you get, if you're calling over Skype or, or Google Plus or something like that, you're going to get a lower quality sound just due to the nature of going over the net. And that's inevitable. So don't don't fuss too much about the sound, especially if you want, you know, if you want guests. I know some people use um I think it's I can't remember what it's called. There's a podcasting service that uses a phone line and the audio ser- the audio quality on that is atrocious. And uh, if you're if you're a radio listener, you're used to that. You're used to how people sound. You're used to static. You're used to like bad, you know, phone call quality stuff. So again, at bare minimum, quality isn't too bad. But the better you sound, the more you might retain listeners. I, I mean, I, that's not a very educated. I mean, well, can let, I, me, that's verifiable? let me just say this quick. As far as before you upgrade, you know, 
before you upgrade past 100 bucks for, for a microphone, I'll just say that, before you move to that next level, a mixer, blah, 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 whatever, um, start recording double ending, or dou a double ender style recording where both guests, hosts, whatever, you record your own audio on your end using Audacity or whatever, and then pull it in, or even just um, pull it out of Skype. You don't need to use, I mean, there's different ways to do it, of course, but um, if you record on your own ends, then you're not the bandwidth uh, degrading that, and then you zip, you know, pull it back together. Audacity is really easy for that. I hate using Audacity, not because it's a difficult program, but because um, my personality is not one that can dig in and deal with that as well as other things. Um, but take the effort step before you take the money step, because um, basically you're just going to get more bang for your, uh, just say your efforts. Um, there you go. By, by putting your, your, your effort in instead of your, your money. Great. Anything to add to that, Kevin? No, I would agree. Uh, that was one of the things that we actually, before uh, JJ kind of stepped back from tech informants, is we were doing that with Audacity. I would record the audio on my end. He would record the audio on his end. And that way we had, regardless of what the connection of the Internet was, we were going to have pure, clean focused audio that you know I could then edit within Audacity after he sent me over his file. Great. Now that's a brilliant plan for people that are comfortable with that. But say I'll have some guests that aren't so comfortable with doing that, you know, yeah, or that's or that's the trouble. Yeah. You can, so, you can still record you can still record uh, the Skype. Um like say you're doing a Skype call or even Google Hangouts, but you can still record their end, it's just that their audio may not be as good. But you can still run a filter. You can tidy that up. You can, I mean, it's it's very doable. You can, um, it's just amazing what you can do with Audacity. We just put a little bit of time into learning it. And once you get good at it, it really doesn't take you too long. Uh, you know, it's very, very doable before you try to spend thousands of dollars on and then confusing your guests as well. Exactly right. So that's some great advice. Uh, now, what, now, we're talking about what software and hardware you need to, to record a podcast. Well, once you have the files saved of, of your voice and, and all that, where do you host the files? Um, what, are, what are some of your recommendations on where to host the files? Well, for me, we use Libsyn to host all of our all of our shows. I mean, every show that I'm involved with is hosted through Libsyn. They create the RSS feed that I then submit to iTunes and TuneIn Radio, uh, Stitcher Radio, but there's a few other services out there. I, uh, I believe you're using SoundCloud as a way to to do yours, and you know then you got Spreaker. There's Blueberry, which is B L U B R R Y. I mean, there's there's a few different options that pricing, depending on your storage, how big your files are, you kind of have to find what is going to work best for you. But I have zero complaints with Libsyn. Great. Vernon, yeah. anything to add to that? Basically just that, yeah, Blueberry and Libsyn, they're kind of like the Ford and the Chevy of podcasting audio po uh, hosting. They certainly work. Uh, they're not overly expensive. They're maybe not be the very cheapest, uh, but they're certainly down there. They're certainly not – you cannot go wrong with either one of those. Um, you could also go with the Internet Audio Archive, which is free, but it also – there are some stipulations whether you are a for-profit for um, entity or not. And um, there's a little bit, there's a few more hiccups as far as getting that audio uh, to where you need it to be, but it is not uh, difficult. There are free ways out there, but it's, it's it's probably worth it. I would just say it's worth it in general to spend a little bit of money for your standard Ford or Chevy hosting, and um, it, it's fine. It's well worth it. Great, and uh, I, I would actually go along with that recommendation. Uh, in fact, I'm going to shout out really quickly to Dave Jackson of schoolofpodcasting.com because he has some great tips on that. And he, when SoundCloud came out with their podcast, and he laughed at it and said, well, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a Libsyn or a Blueberry. Like, don't take it too seriously. I'm using it for this, and that's because I want to try it. This is part of my experiment. And uh, it's, it looks compelling. It, it sold me, and it's pretty dang cheap per month. So, I, And it's for unlimited storage. It's for unlimited minutes of content, unlimited file size. So I'm going to it sounds good to me, so I'm going to try it. Uh, it. It provides you with an RSS feed. 
if you ever redirect to a different RSS feed, there's actually a, a field for it. So you can, if you decide not to use SoundCloud anymore, you can throw the RSS in there, and all your directories won't get you know messed up, and it will just forward right to your new one. So I thought, what do I have to lose? Might as well try it out. Right. Uh, but for most people, I would say go with Libsyn or Blueberry. But again, for this sort of experimental uh, seven streams at once type thing, I decided to go with something a little bit different. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes people make when they podcast? You guys have been on, as you mentioned earlier, hundreds of shows, uh, and you've you've certainly managed many of them, what, and you've listened to a lot of them. What do you find the, are the biggest issues in podcasts? Uh, well, well, in general, <clears throat> you need to think about... Um, people tend to think sometimes that you can jump in and just make money at it. You need to either do one or the other, okay? And I'm not necessarily speaking about one show in particular. This is very broad. I listen to a lot of podcasts about podcasts, and they tell they say the same thing. Um, you can't just expect to jump in and be uh, an overnight sensation as far as revenue. You certainly can become very quickly a star. It's a, it's a poor way of putting it, but you can become revered uh, or, or easily respected in your niche segment easily and that was actually something that I it was challenging to me and not that I was certainly Glance and Go Radio was not a huge huge show but it was we were certainly very proud of it and it was it was really interesting how the fans were um, how they they were fans I didn't think I would have Fans, okay. Same thing with Emma Small Show. We have people who consistently listen to the show and they really, really like it. That's awesome. And so it's it's interesting to go from being one of those fans to having fans like that. That is, um, I guess it's not really a mistake. That just kind of segue, you know, it's kind of. Um, but but that helps you move along. That c continues to inspire you. But you need to also take into account the the grind, the daily work. Yeah, it may have been a hobby to begin with. Now it feels like an obligation, and you, and it's easier if you're a single person who has potentially uh, you know uh, time to to put into this. But if you have a family, if you have other other jobs, several jobs, like whatever, um, it does. You have to prioritize, and you say this will help me further my cause of getting this message out to people. This is fluff. This is extra stuffing. This is the glazing on that already tasty. Um, ham. I don't. That's a that's a horrible analogy. But like, you don't have to. You have to choose where you're going to put your time and effort. And most of it's effort. Um, podcasting can be very very cheap, and um, most people don't uh, become millionaires by podcasting. Okay, that's not the point. So just don't get sucked. Don't um, basically just don't think that it's going to be that quick. Okay, the grind is there. You need to grind it out and actually put out shows. And this is coming from people who are much more experienced at this than I do. I would just say, um, real quick, Cliff Ravenscraft. I've learned a whole bunch of, from him. He is a podcast answer man. And I listen to just about every one of his episodes. And um, he talks about this all the time. This is coming from, from knowledge, uh, even less from experience. I'm still very inexperienced in the podcasting podcasting world. Uh, that is some great stuff right there. Uh, before I continue really quickly, I want to say hi to Brenda H., who's watching on you now. I'm recording a podcast right now, so that is what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny with these... Welcome, people. Brenda. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Uh, uh, great. So, Kevin, uh, what what are mistakes that you see? So, Kevin, you touched on... Or, Vernon, you touched on people want to make money out of it from the beginning, and that's not realistic... You need to build up a following. I, I, shouldn't say that. I, I should just say manage expectations okay. because it very, very you very easily can be very profitable very quickly if you do it right. Um, and I, I don't say right or wrong. I'm just saying you, if you happen to get lucky and pick the right thing, maybe we can talk about it later. Maybe we'll just drop it. But um, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So manage <laughs> your Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, that's actually that's fine. Uh, know what you're getting into beforehand. Uh, Kevin, do you have any insight on some big mistakes people make when they podcast? Just not really being 
prepared, and I've been guilty of that on a couple occasions where you know you get up and you get ready to record, and you've been so busy that you haven't really had a chance to look over your notes or put together enough stories or be knowledgeable enough about your stories. So definitely would recommend don't jump into something wanting to do multiple episodes a week. Uh, start off once a week and make sure that you have that one episode a week as polished as possible. Then you can kind of jump into doing more episodes per week to try to grow. And Because we all have so many different things to talk about, depending, especially depending on your, your topics. If it's something about cars, there's always, you know, whether it's car recalls or car repairs or, hey, this new vehicle's getting ready to come out. Or technology, for example, is just crazy because so many things are going on. We could talk seven days a week for two, three hours a day and still probably not cover everything. So you just have to make sure that you're prepared, I would say, and go into it knowing what it is that you want to talk about and be open to feedback. Listen to your listeners' feedback because that's really important because that's the people that are listening telling you what they want to hear. You, know, you might have a great idea and a great way of delivering something, but if you've got listeners telling you that they would like to have A, B, C instead of D, E, F, then you, know, then you might want to listen. And you, know, you might see your numbers increase because if they're enjoying it, then they're probably going to be telling their friends and hopefully you're gathering more listeners through word of mouth, which is the most important form of advertising when it comes to podcasts. Awesome. I think that goes for things in general. Word of mouth is very, very, very powerful for marketing. And I think I'm going to use this time and say, if you want to give me feedback for this show and you want to uh, help Kevin out here, help me out with his suggestion of uh, giving the show's feedback, go to beyondtweeting.com slash contact and you will see a little form in which you can uh, send me... What I like is if you want to be on the show, I would love it if you were to record yourself and then and then send that to me. You can do that a variety of ways. Uh, if you'd like, you can attach an audio file, record yourself, maybe on your phone or, or on your device, and send it to me on beyondtweeting.com slash contact. There's a place to upload a, an audio file. Or if you just want to upload to YouTube and send me a YouTube video, I will include the audio to your question if I choose it and put it on the podcast. So you should do that. That goes for feedback, that goes for wanting to be on the show, that goes for comments on what I can, how I can improve and whatever else. So thank you, Kevin, for bringing that to my attention so that I can share that with the listeners. So those are some good things to avoid. So to recap, have some expectations beforehand. I think to build upon what Vernon was talking about, know how long your podcast should be, for example. Also to go with what Kevin was saying. Being prepared and setting expectations involves how often am I going to record, how long is it going to be, uh, and then so that you have a consistent schedule because that's how you can get some traction. And now I'm breaking all those rules because this week I'm recording with a different guest every single day and then from then on I'm doing one week show. And that's because I want to get momentum going again as part of this experiment. Like what if I could go viral for a week, right? Like that's what I'm, that's what I'm striving for. We'll see if it works. It might completely crash and burn. But uh, that being said, pretty much if you want a good podcast that'll work, Talk to these guys. Do not talk to me. Look at me as the anomaly and the person that's goofing around. Uh, talk to these guys. And, uh, I'm again, I can't be more excited that they're on the show. Uh, publishing. Actually, no, let's go to post-production first. So let's say you got a audio file recorded. You have your, uh, you have your host ready uh, to upload. How do you want to sort of prepare that file for appropriate podcasty? Uh, existence. That was a terrible way of describing it, but uh, I think, Kevin, you, you do this a lot. What would you say? Well, I've got you know audio files that we use for our intros and our outros, and you know they're pretty much they're set. So, you know, in Audacity, throw up a, a few stereo tracks, paste in the files, you know, put them in in the order that it's actually going to be playing through. Intro music. And then if I've got some kind of like an ad read or something like that, toss that in, put in the main audio file, you know, clear out the noise, and then throw in the outro. Just kind of do the stereo fade, stereo fade in, fade out, stuff like that, just to kind of give it that professional kind of sounding like you would hear on the radio 
where it's not just a bunch of loud music and try to even out the audio levels. Sometimes that can be some of the most challenging things depending on everybody's recording situation. But if it's just you by yourself, you are in complete control of your audio levels. So Yeah, that's nice. But when you have guests on, that can kind of be of a, be of a challenge because they might be really soft sp- speakers or they might be really loud or the host might be quiet or the host might be loud and trying to get that even can be a bit of a challenge. Right, so if you're in Audacity and you're recording, what are some really easy settings to click to get it? I mean, obviously you want to do fine-tuning and you want to look at the file and see what those levels are and, and sort of manage those. But let's say you're not completely interested in that and you don't want to spend your time doing a lot of that. What are, what are some quick, easy fixes in Audacity you can do to kind of fix audio levels and all one go? The easiest one that I've actually been using lately, and it's one of the things we started doing on the MS Mobile Show, is give me like four or five seconds of silence at the beginning of an episode before the host starts talking. That way it gives a chance to figure out what the the white noise is. Because then what I'll do is I'll take the first four or five seconds, I'll select that, I'll go to, I believe it's effects, noise removal, I'll get the noise profile, it'll do that, and then I'll select that entire track again and then actually run the noise removal effect on it, on the entire track, and it removes any kind of, like, white noise. Like, you might hear uh, fans kind of going a little bit, depending on where you're recording, like ventilation, AC, PD. Oh, what season season it is of the year? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and you might get a little bit of that, and that'll kind of help eliminate that. And that is just a very simple thing that, you know... Silly me, I just really learned this within the last probably two months, and it's like, man, I wish I would have known this 200 episodes ago. <laughs> that actually, that's something I do that. on the show, too. I actually get a noise profile for the background noise, and it does. It fixes the sound. It's like magic. Uh, if What you don't want to do with it is if someone like knocks on your door, and you're like, oh, well, that's noise, so I'm going to select that. That'll destroy your track. So yeah, get, like, you focus can't on do the that. white noise. Not just noise in general, because... I know I've tried this where, oh, man, I wonder if this noise remover works on this person talking, and then it, like, ruins the whole thing. So careful that you don't do that. And then another thing I want to add to that is if you click Effect and go to... You can, there's several options that I like to use. There's Compressor, there's Normalize, and there's Amplify. And that's how you can really quickly... Compressor, as far as I understand, kind of equalizes everything, Normalize does something similar, and then Amplify can bring up the audio. So if your whole track is super quiet... Use Amplify and like do it up a few. Don't do it a whole ton. Don't make it super loud. But that's how you can equalize uh, your volume levels. Vernon, do you have anything to add? Because I know you've done some. I know you do a little bit of post production stuff as well. Yeah, I have. And um, as far as just making sure that the metadata itself, when you throw it up on whatever your hosting service is, make sure that is is good, as as complete or thorough as you can. Try to have it as consistent as you can, so that. Um, it just consistency is good anyway, but even as you post it so that the names of your shows are the same, you know, similar or whatever, but even more so just um, like the the information that shows up, like the description, think about where that's going to be seen. Think about how that is, like even if you expect your most of your listeners are going to be through iTunes, for example, go to iTunes, see how how many rows that shows up, see how many words you might see, and then put that. Okay, I only have you know 80 characters of the bulk of it, so I want to make sure I hit the 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 headline, just be that. Then you could have a broader description, basically with that, just expanding upon it. And then of course your show notes and stuff like that, links in there. It's helpful. It's really good to engage with with listeners. But the show notes aren't required. Get the content out there. I listen to a lot of podcasts. There's really few that I go to that I actually check the show notes. And that is a is a trend. But it is beneficial. It is, it is better if you have the show notes in there. But as far as editing, my, my suggestion, get someone else to do it if you can. <laughs> because I don't like doing it. And that truly is... Um, one of the the great things about MS Mobile Show is that Kevin does have a true a talent for that, in that um, it is certainly a place that I'm lacking. And so if I'm able to just record and work on the sh- the, the show notes themselves, you know, the host notes, and then have someone else who has a, as a strength in that area to do the, to do the the audio, 
Perfect. Absolutely. You know, work together. Um, single podcasters certainly exist. You can do it all in one, and that's great. But if you can work as a team, play on everyone's strengths, that's even better. There you go. And in case you are doing it solo and you do not have the luxury of having someone else do it, the ID3 tags happen in Audacity. When you export a file, this this window comes up and says, hey, film this information. There's some. It's like artist album. It's optimized for music, but the conventions, uh, the conventions you use for podcasting looks something like artist would be your name or the producer's name, album is the title of the podcast, track is like the name of your show. You might have episode one or title or you know whatever whatever convention you want to use, and then the description would be the description of the show, what's in the show. And as uh, Vernon said, be consistent. If you use episode one, title, use episode two, title for the next one. Don't do title EP01. Like, make it a consistent format, because that's how it can look the best in iTunes, that's how it can look the best in Stitcher and the other podcasting directories. So, great stuff there. Thank you guys so much. I, I, I'm excited to do this podcast as I'm talking about it. It's like excitementception going on right now. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Publishing. All right, so now you have your podcast recorded. You have the correct equipment and the correct software to get through it. Uh, and you have a good post-production editing going on. All right, so now we're on to the publishing part of it. So once you upload the file, how do you get it to uh, get known? How do you get people to learn about your podcast? How do you share your podcast with people? Uh, Vernon, go ahead and speak to that first if you don't mind. Well, if, if you were a, a deep sea fisherman, fisher person, or whatever, you've seen some of these shows. My wife likes this uh, re this reality show. I don't know, some fishing show. Um, I don't know what it is. And they have several lines in the water. Okay, they definitely have several lines in the water all the time. And they're and then when they get a hit, then they pull all the other lines back and they focus on that one that's got a hit on it. Okay. So it's important, or I should say it's, it's valuable to be available through as many places as you can. But if you truly engage with one medium, let's say, for example, Twitter happens to be my focus, okay, um, it may be worth it to focus there more so, especially if you see that, that uh, fire growing or whatever, to focus on that and not to, I mean... It's a balance, I guess. How much time do you want to put into this? Um, but if whatever that, that first line is that you get a hit on, you better respond to that. So basically, you want to treat every fan as if they are the only one you have, especially when you're starting off, because they are going to be the, your evangelists. They're going to be sharing the things for you, even just as simple as a retweet. If you're on Twitter, if you're a brand new show and you personally are on Twitter, you have 100 followers, you're going to appreciate every single retweet that you get, okay? And so, um, and you should, even if you have a thousand followers, you should still appreciate every retweet. But um, tr treat every fan as the, the only ones you have, and 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 be genuine, be punctual, or um, you know, quick to respond, basically. Um, but you don't have to. Uh, don't wear out the conversation. <laughs> That's just a Twitter tip, basically. Um, also, as your influence increases, and I'm not to this point yet, but this I've heard from many people, continue to do for some what you'd like to do for all. So say you get a 1,000 pieces of feedback every episode. You obviously cannot handle all of that, but take the time and be really thorough on at least a few pieces of feedback and say, hey, Bob, thank you for reading in. You're one of our favorite listeners. You always give us great information. Check out Bob's website. The guy's a salt. He's a stand-up dude. He's got some great, um, he has a great topic on this. You can only do that for one guy. I have a thousand pieces of feedback or whatever, but do for one as you'd like to do for everyone, and um, that's I'm not to that point. That's not from experience. That's just what I've heard from many people who are who I respect in, in the industry. Solid stuff, Vernon. Thank you for sharing. Speaking of focusing on one platform, part of this experiment is I am focusing on Google+, and the other streaming services are secondary. For example, my Meerkat audience, we have, looks like we have seven or eight people right now. 98 people have passed through the Meerkat room, and some people are saying, hey, I really want to be able to hear it the other side. So for basically, I'm going to explain, Periscope and Meerkat people cannot hear my guests right now. 
but I'm currently looking into ways to channel the audio to go to the Periscope Meerkat folks when I have guests. Because when I don't have guests, it's fine because they can hear everything that's happening anyways. But I want to find ways to spread it out. But I'm not focusing on that for right now. I'm focusing on Google+. Plus. I'm focusing on Twitter. So in the beginning, especially focus on one thing. And if you can branch out, do it. The only reason I'm branching out at all is because it's the same amount of effort. I have one webcam. I'm hitting record on seven things, but that's one time. And then it's recording on seven different things, right? So uh, I really am focusing on one thing with the shared advantage of it happening to be in other places. But I am really focusing on one thing. Now, David, for uh, listeners, David is an anomaly. He figures he figures this stuff out. I don't know how you're doing this, okay? If you can handle this, if you truly can be as broad as David is and he's doing it well, uh, don't limit yourself, absolutely. My, I, my point is that podcasting is very, very part-time for many people, and you, you need to basically just pick your battles. Um, that was the reason for that as far as time management. You don't want to, I'll just say... You don't want to half-ass many things. <laughs> you want to at least be good at one thing. <laughs> yeah, I can't agree more with that. And that's honestly one of my problems is I like to be in so many other other so many places. I don't always give the full attention that it needs to each platform. So with my work schedule, I was able to work something out where today is I work day a day off from work for the most part. That's, there's gonna be some exceptions. But that's because I don't want to like devote a day to podcasting and then leave somewhere else and then you know be distracted and all that. So I thought if I work more hours on different days and focus you know, today on just podcasting, that's a huge sacrifice for more people that have kids and families and all that. Uh, I, I just, you know, I, I'm a single guy. I have several jobs, but I can sort of move my time like this. And while you can do that, do that. Uh, but thank you for pointing that out, Vernon. This is very much an anomaly uh, situation. So, uh, Kevin, do you, is there, do you have any tips on getting your show known, getting your podcast spread? Now, one of the things that I've actually implemented recently was I created kind of a posting template for Reddit. And I just went through and set up all the formatting, and then I copied that over. Basically, I just keep it in OneNote, but I pasted it in there for each different show and just changed the... So whether it's social media links, the website links, things like that. So when I go to publish a new show and I share it in the Reddit podcast, daily podcast of the day or whatever, I'll, I'll paste that episode in there and just make a couple little tweaks what the episode was about and can upload that. So that was just the way that you know I spent probably 10, 15 minutes, maybe probably even a little bit longer. But once it was done, it's, it's done. You know, I mean... I can do that same process for all the different shows that, you know, because Reddit is, is a good way to get your content noticed as well. Uh, and just also making sure that you do like kind of what Vernon said, focus on one platform. You, you might see which one is actually gaining the most following to help you determine where your focus should be on. Twitter has always been my biggest focus when it came to uh, getting feedback and uh, getting a response from people. So that is where we do spend most of uh, our time when it comes to the various shows is on Twitter. Right, and I think there's a reason for that. I think the kind of audience that Twitter caters to is uh, p- interest-driven, passionate people, uh, and that's great. What, what, I want to know what subreddit you're talking about, the podcasting one, because a lot of the podcast reddits that I've seen are very you know, very strict on, you know, do not promote your own show, and which I can respect because, you know, who wants to be part of a community where everyone's shouting about their own thing all the time? And also, the podcasting groups you mentioned, Kevin, are very uh, specifically, this is not a self place to self-promote, this is a place to bounce ideas off. So I understand both sides, but at the same time, I want to be able to share this podcast with prospective listeners. So what, what subreddit was it? You said, like, podcast of the day or something like that? Uh, let's see, I'm actually looking at it. There we go. It's just simply um, reddit.com slash r slash podcast, and then there's a daily episode post. Okay, because I saw, I saw that. I saw r slash podcast, but yeah. I also saw yeah, r slash podcast. I saw r slash podcasting, so I just wanted to make sure that so slash podcast is the one to use. Yeah, slash podcasts, it's plural. That's okay. the one that oh, I go podcast. to. Okay, good, good. All right. Well, excellent. Um, okay, then uh, there's only a few questions left I have for you guys before I let you guys go. 
Um, but I want to know, what are some of the most awkward moments in podcasting you've been a part of? So maybe you've been hosting a show or you've been a guest, and you don't have to, you don't have to name the podcast by name or, the, or whatever. Just what was one of the most awkward situations you've been in while podcasting? Okay, well, I'll go first because I think this is a very interesting story. This was an episode, and this guest had was really wanting to come on, and they were not uh, in the area. So it was definitely going to be a, you know, over Hangouts interview. And their audio quality, and their connection was just horrible. We were getting started probably 20 to 30 minutes late because trying to get them to understand and get set up how to connect and how to get the graphic overlay set up, and it was just becoming kind of a headache. And then they were having some pretty weird connection issues, and it was just it was horrible. So I just I shut the show down in the middle of the episode, deleted any sign of it, and just said, we're just going to reschedule. Oh, man. So did you end up rescheduling? Yeah, we did reschedule, and they made sure that they were... You know, they were at home in a nice quiet. It was it was much better that time. I mean, I well, just completely weird. shut the episode down with without warning to anybody. I was like, boop, done, over. Oh man, well that's all that deleted doesn't everything. Before. Yeah, Vernon, what you got? Well, I've had I've had situations like that where it was poor quality, and then something. And other times we were like, we're just gonna try it, see what we get. And actually, had people call in. They were just walking around downtown New York, and it's like, "Hey, Skype actually working right now." So, and we've done shows where people just call in through Skype on their phone. They're just sitting out on their porch. You hear the crickets chirping or whatever. Um, you hear the, you know, the, the wife putting the kid to bed in the background, and um, you know, some of those shows were just so fan based, just so community based that nobody cared. They were just being a part of it, you know, and. But it's very, very, very easy for poor audio quality, show quality, to distract from the true message of it. So, I mean, um, there have been times, there have been shows I put out that I wish I would have canceled it because of technical stuff like that. And it's um, okay. it's a tough choice. Uh, Kevin probably made the, the wiser choice where I was just like, ah, just throw it up. Uh, as far as uh, an embarrassing moment, I've had, um, we have a guest on, and some people are, you know, their their humor is different, and it's odd. Even across the the country, at least the U.S., you don't necessarily get the the humor is always the same, or at least the level of sarcasm. And so someone could make a make a, a joke, you know, even specifically like a, you know, like a sexual orientation joke or something like that, and not know if it's truly, you know, if it's just dry, or sarcastic, or if they're being serious or whatever, and you're like, well, what do I say to that? And it's it's just like, uh, and that you know that type of thing can be can be a challenge. That's just with anything that when you have a when you have a a guest on, um, or even really with other hosts or whatever. Uh, for the most part, it's a live show, but of course, many podcasts, well, nearly all podcasts are uh, on demand afterwards, and so you have the opportunity to edit that up, clean it up if you need to. But still, that's uh, it's like, what, what do I, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Oh, man, that's hilarious. I want to wrap up really quickly here. I want to make sure the show is under an hour. So people in Meerkat, stay, because I have some for you at the end after I uh, broadcast. Um, the last thing I want to leave the show with before I get to the sort of the ending part of the show where I go through the ask question and all that stuff is if in one sentence, what is the most important reason to podcast? I'll go with Vernon, and then I'll go with Kevin. If there's one, you have one sentence basically to encapsulate it. Well, um, basically share your passion. Um, if there are not already many other people with the same interests as you, um, you will still have the opportunity to show them why it may interest them too. Like if you, you can already have a community and you can bond with them basically, but it needs to be something you're passionate about. If you are incredibly knowledgeable about something, you've got a double master's in something, but you're not really passionate about it, your show is going to kind of fizzle. Even if you don't, Even if you continue on, you, your passion might fizzle out, and it needs to be something that you truly do enjoy. And if someone enjoys something, they tend to be knowledgeable at it anyway, even by default or you know afterwards. Okay, great. Uh, how about you, Kevin? Well, I would say since kind of Vernon, I would I would definitely echo what Vernon said, but also if you're a business owner, 
this is a podcasting is another great way to reach your customers with up-to-date information you don't have to spend all the money on radio advertising because radio advertising is very expensive but podcasting is very affordable and you can create the content that you want to put out not that has to be approved by the radio station so I, I just think it's another great outlet for businesses to be able to reach their you know their customer base whether you're like a real estate agent I think it'd be fabulous for that you know just put out like a weekly update here's my new listings here's the listings that have been updated with price reductions or vice versa or that you're giving or if you're a photographer that you can mention hey I'm giving out a deal based on this feedback you know graduation seasons coming up or you know back to school you know seniors get your senior photos shot for uh, a nice discount only if you listen to the podcast you can get a special discount just different right. ways that you can be creative with that great advice and I've heard lots of podcasters doing that and it seems to really work so echoing what you guys said fantastic well I want to get right on into the ask David V section of the show I ask questions and you answer them the last question was how many social networks are you on I'm gonna pick Josh Risco he says he is around on around 10 or so. Ten's probably a good average for people. People might not think, ah, oh, you don't only think of Facebook, but you're probably on more than you think you are, which brings me to Google+, Plus, which is our social network of the day. Uh, but before I get to that, the question of this episode is if you could start your own podcast, what would it be about? Please respond to me on beyondtweeting.com slash contact, or send me a tweet with the Ask David V, my middle initial hashtag, uh, and let me know what your podcast would be about if you were to start one. The social network of the day, like I said, is Google+. The reason for that is Hangouts, which we are using right now, has transformed the way I personally use podcasting, and it's become this live streaming sort of broadcasting uh, feat as well, which is really fun. We also do that on the MS Mobile Show, and many of the podcasts that Kevin's a part of, he does that as well. Uh, there's an app for iOS and Android, uh, there is an app called App for Google Plus on Windows, but as we all know, Google's not the biggest fan of Microsoft, so you're not going to find an actual Hangouts app on Windows Phone. Let's take a trip to the App Graveyard. These are the applications and services that are no longer with us. Today's dearly departed application is Google Buzz. I can't think of a single person who actually misses it, but it was part of Gmail for a while, and so there are a lot of privacy concerns uh, with Google Buzz, and uh, they got a lot of flack for it. It was sort of uh, Google's earliest attempt at anything social. It was sort of the precursor to Google+, and it got, man, it got destroyed, and uh, Google sunsetted it pretty early on in its life. It didn't last very long. Maybe a year, if that. I don't quite remember, but do any of you remember seeing or, or using Google Buzz? I don't. I, I, I did not, had not heard of it until now. I knew of it, but I never use it. I mean, it's another one of those things that Google throws up against the wall and sees if it's going to stick, and then, you know, they decide whether they're going to kill it off. Oh, man, like Google Wave. Google Wave is going to replace Gmail. Like, oh, man, they've done so much stuff. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so that was kind of a fun thing to remember. Now we're on to immature impersonations. They might be good, they might be bad, but they're certainly immature. Now, I'm going to try Steve Ballmer. I have not practiced this impersonation. I have no idea how it's going to sound. But I thought it would be good since we're on a tech sort of Microsoft-flavored episode with our guests. It'd be fun to try a Steve Ballmer. So here goes nothing. <clears throat> we are excited to release new software on a handful of new devices. And guess who we're making it for? Developers, 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 developers. Oh, and if you want to listen to a great show, listen to the MS Mobile Show, where it's all about techies and developers. Yeah, that's, that's what I got. <laughs> that's good. That's good, David. Half of that was just sort of improvised, and I realized I probably distorted the microphone when I did that, so I'm going to have to go in and edit it now. I was a, a bit too uh, eccentric Steve Ballmer there. Well, well Steve Ballmer's pretty uh, <laughs> an excitable guy, so he he's is. passionate. So. He is. And actually, I just thought of this. It would be fun if you go to beyondtweeting.com slash contact and give me your own Steve Ballmer impression. That would be pretty fun, and maybe we'll play it on the next episode. Uh, but that just about wraps things up for this episode of the Beyond Tweeting Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, watching, sharing, commenting, 
and subscribing. For all things Beyond Tweeting, visit beyondtweeting.com. To subscribe, search Beyond Tweeting in your favorite podcast application or visit beyondtweeting.com slash subscribe. The show is going on right now, which it is. You can watch live at beyondtweeting.com slash live. Uh, Vernon, I'd like you to end uh, our show with an anticlimactic line. With an anticlimactic line? Yep, and when you say it, uh, you get to the last thing you say, and then we're going to end it. Uh, no pressure. I need some new shoes.